We visited Will Osborne at Osborne Farms to learn about the wheat harvest. Let's see how it's done. Osborne Farms has several fields southwest of Oklahoma City. They are primarily a cattle operation, which involves growing wheat for winter pasturing. They also grow hay and cotton and other crops. This field is near Pocasset. It was planted in late October and not grazed over the winter. The harvest day was in mid-June, which was delayed about two weeks because of a series of rain. Sometimes we only think about the rain needed for the crops to grow. In reality, weather plays an important role throughout the year. Anytime machinery is working in the field, it needs to be dry enough to operate on. That includes field prep, planting, spraying, and harvesting. There also needs to be proper moisture for seed germination and growing, but excessive rainfall can result in crop damage. Not to mention the risk of severe weather damage. Farmers have to manage around less than ideal weather, which means needing the ability to react quickly and having scheduling flexibility. This is just one of the many examples of how farmers use a variety of skills to get the job done. This variety of wheat is named Green Hammer. It's a hard red winter wheat developed by Oklahoma State University's Wheat Improvement Team. This combine is equipped with a 40-foot draper head. As the reels move forward, it stands up any stalks that are laying down. The stalks enter the sickle, which are the knives that act like clippers cutting the wheat stalks. The wheat stalks tumble onto a belt conveyor that moves them to the center of the head, where they go into the feed house and are fed into the combine. Inside, a rotor, grid bars, shaker pans, and fans thresh and winnow the grain. Threshing means separating the wheat grain from the rest of the plant. Winnowing means removing the chaff, which is the husk around the grain. The combine gets its name because it combines all these tasks into one machine, cutting, threshing, and winnowing. This is what the wheat looks like going into the combine. This is what it looks like coming out of the combine. The stalks and the chaff get finely chopped up and discharged back onto the field. This adds back valuable nutrients and organic matter to the soil. The wheat gets moved into onboard storage called the grain tank. This grain tank holds 400 bushels. You may be wondering what a bushel is. A bushel is a unit of volume. One bushel is almost the same space as two five-gallon buckets. But measuring volume isn't always so handy. So sometimes people just go by the average bushel weight. For wheat, 60 pounds is considered a bushel. A bushel of wheat is about 1 million individual grains. Provides enough flour for 70 loaves of white bread. Currently is about $10 and over 40 years has ranged from $1 to $12. Note that these prices are set by the market, not by the farmers. When the grain tank is full, that is 24,000 pounds of wheat. Rather than stop harvesting and drive to the truck to unload every time the grain tank is full, a second tractor pulls alongside with a grain cart. Wheat can be transferred from the combine to the grain cart while still harvesting. This saves time and fuel. If the grain cart is busy unloading another combine, then the grain tank can be directly unloaded into the truck. This truck holds a little over a thousand bushels. From here, the truck takes the grain to the market or to storage. That could be any number of places including directly to the flour mill, a satellite receiving site for the mill, barge loading docks on the river, or storage for selling at a later date. Some of the grain is held back for planting seed for next year's crop. If a field has a good year, planting 100 pounds of seed per acre can result in 3,000 pounds of harvested grain. The wheat from this field is going to Shawnee Mills, 
But rather than going direct all the way to Shawnee, it will be delivered to the satellite storage facility they operate in Minko. When the truck arrives, it gets weighed in. Samples are taken to determine wheat quality. It's checked for protein content, moisture, cleanliness, and proper bushel weight. The final price the farmer receives can be higher or lower than the base price, depending on how the quality checks go. Then the truck takes the wheat to the unloading bay for knee storage bins. In total, they can store about 580,000 bushels of wheat. That is enough wheat for the annual supply of 190,000 Americans. A crank slides open a gate at the bottom of the truck. Grain flows into this pit where conveyors move it to this elevator leg, which raises the grain high into the sky. From there, it is transferred to other conveyors that direct it to whichever storage bin it needs to go. The wheat will stay in storage until it's needed by the flour mill in Shawnee. By next spring, these bins will be empty and ready for the next crop. Wheat goes into many more products beyond bread. Pasta, pizza, cereals, pastries, cakes, cookies, biscuits, tortillas, crackers, pie dough, and more. About 20% of the world's food intake calories comes from wheat. Not all of the wheat goes to stores and bakeries. About 10% of the U.S. wheat crop gets used in animal feeds. To produce that wheat, farmers like Will put in a lot of work and a lot of knowledge. Some of their many skills include mechanics, machinery operation, agronomy, business, law, logistics, commodity marketing, monitoring the weather, labor management, and much, much more. I hope you enjoyed this look at wheat and wheat harvesting. If you did, please like and subscribe. See you on our next adventure.